Welcome back to Mystic Recaps. Today we have a special treat for you as we delve into a 2022 sci-fi thriller movie project Gemini. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and be prepared for an exciting journey as we dive into the film and uncover all the spoilers. Three years ago, the world was struck by a devastating plant virus that spread rapidly and decimated ecosystems. The virus, when consumed in food, caused severe autoimmune diseases and the loss of plant life led to a decrease in atmospheric oxygen levels, increasing natural disasters. Despite the efforts of leading research laboratories, a cure for the virus remained elusive, and many began to believe that the planet was doomed. The only glimmer of hope came in the form of Project Gemini, a groundbreaking endeavor developed by Dr. Stephen and his team. The project was based on two ancient alien artifacts discovered by paleontologists, believed to be four billion years old and predating any known form of life on Earth. Stephen's team successfully recreated the super-tough materials found in the artifacts and constructed copies. With these materials, they built a ship capable of unmanned flight and discovered a suitable planet for terraforming. The sphere, one of the artifacts, was able to create life and its use was made possible by the decoding of dozens of commands. It was a clear indication that life on Earth had been created by extraterrestrial beings. A team comprising of both medical professionals and military pilots will embark on a journey to create Earth 2.0 with the sphere in the test solar system, located several hundred light years away. Stephen's wife, Amy, was opposed to his participation in the mission, but on the day of the launch, she still came to the base in an attempt to stop him from leaving. She ultimately arrived too late and was forced to watch as the ship departed the planet. When the vessel leaves the atmosphere, an unusual crack appears on the alien sphere, indicating they may not be alone. Using the alien engine technology, the ship opens a warping portal that allows them to jump across the universe. However, as soon as they make it to the other side, the systems indicate an error. They haven't arrived at test, they're somewhere unknown. Stephen places the blame on engineer Peter for the mistaken coordinates, leading to his temporary dismissal from duties. As Stephen rests, his mind wanders to thoughts of Amy and also to the first activation of the sphere, during which he caught a glimpse of a mysterious humanoid form that disappeared quickly. Determined to uncover their location, Stephen asks the team to try and set the jump trajectory, but all data is found to be corrupted as if they had moved between the third and fourth dimensions. Meanwhile, Peter leaves his bunker and takes one of the security cameras to inspect the sphere alone. At that moment, the computer announces that someone has opened the repair airlock and that an unidentified object is approaching. To the shock of all on board, they witness Peter floating outside in a state of suspended animation. Charlie Kaufman Dr. David believes that Peter took his own life due to guilt for his mistake, but Dr. Leona is skeptical, as she had known Peter for eight years and couldn't believe he would do such a thing. Stephen berates Leona for her emotional response and assigns her to take over Peter's duties. David confides in Stephen that when his daughter passed away, he too had considered ending his own life, but ultimately decided to try and be of use. Now that the mission is over, he feels useless once more, but Stephen assures him that they will find a solution. As they speak, the ship comes across a planet made of volcanic rock, lacking in oxygen but with a non-hostile external environment, requiring only breathing masks for survival. Excited by this discovery, Stephen is eager to land on the planet, but Captain Ryan cautions him, pointing out that they haven't properly examined the planet yet and that Stephen's eagerness could risk the safety of the crew. Unfazed by Ryan's warning, Stephen reminds the team that he is in charge and orders them to land on the planet via shuttle, with Officer Richard remaining on the mothership. As they approach the planet, they are met with a violent storm, forcing them to activate the braking thrusters to slow their descent. The harsh landing has consumed all of their fuel and left them stranded, but it is their only chance for survival. As the shuttle crashes to the ground, the crew loses consciousness and Stephen experiences a dream about the time he gave Amy a bracelet made from a piece of the ancient sphere, symbolizing the connection between the two most important things in his life. Upon waking, the crew assesses the damage to the shuttle and discovers that while it is still operational, their fuel supply is critically low, leaving them stranded on the planet. Steven sees no problem with this, as they had planned to stay for four years and he believes they can use one of the large caves as a dome for launching the sphere. Meanwhile, strange goo begins to drip from the walls in the hidden corridors of the shuttle. On the mothership, Richard discovers the same goo, as well as the missing camera, during an inspection of the other rooms. Once the crew is properly suited up, they take the sphere to the nearest cave and successfully activate it. As they return to the shuttle to begin collecting data, Ryan announces that martial law is now in effect at the station. To justify this decision, he shares files sent to him by Richard, which reveal a video of Peter recording himself as he inspected the sphere, presumably to clear himself of any responsibility for mistakes. As Peter opened the door to the engine, he is suddenly attacked and killed by an unseen entity before being thrown out of the ship. The creature's shape remains unseen in the footage, but Richard explains that he has meticulously reviewed all the footage and determined that the alien has been with them since they departed Earth, having traveled inside the sphere like a Trojan horse. It likely caused the failure during the jump, but it is no longer on the mothership. 
having descended to the planet with the shuttle. Richard can track it due to the alien's interference in the electromagnetic field, which also explains the poor recording quality. The discussion is abruptly interrupted by David, who has noticed something strange in the system. The Sphere is running a program different from the one they uploaded. Stephen is eager to return to the Sphere, but Ryan stops him, reminding him that he is no longer in charge and accusing him of keeping secrets. Ryan reveals that Richard has also found footage of Stephen seeing the mysterious shape on Earth months ago, meaning that Stephen knew of the potential threat and yet said nothing, making Peter's death his fault. Outraged by this accusation, Stephen storms out of the room, reflecting on all the work he and David had put into the project. Stephen had been uncertain about David joining the mission, as he was still grieving, but David had convinced him that he was ready and wanted to create a better Earth to prevent other children from suffering the same fate as his daughter. Stephen approaches David and pleads with him to sneak out with him through the airlock to check on the sphere, reminding him of his daughter and the future of the planet. David is hesitant to disobey Ryan but ultimately agrees to accompany Stephen. The clock ticks as Stephen and David make their way into the cave, the tension palpable as they approach the mysterious sphere. But as they lay their eyes on it, they realize something is off. The sphere settings have been tampered with, and it's creating an alien life form at an alarming rate. Stephen, consumed by the sphere's potential, ignores David's pleas to leave and discuss the situation with the rest of the crew. But things take a turn for the worse as David spots the alien on their radar, closing in fast. He fires a warning shot, trying to snap Stephen out of his trance, but Stephen responds by pulling out his weapon. Just as things are about to escalate, the creature makes its grand entrance into the cave. Stephen quickly grabs a piece of the sphere before they both make a mad dash for the exit. The creature hot on their heels, the shadows and noises it makes growing closer by the second. They finally catch a glimpse of the creature as they make their escape, but before it can attack, they manage to get back into the shuttle and shut the airlock. David lies to Stephen for risking their lives, but Stephen is unfazed, reminding David that the sphere is worth any risk. And next time, he won't hesitate to pull the trigger. Just as the dust settles, Ryan shows up, ready to give Stephen a piece of his mind. But Stephen escalates the situation by saying they will need force to stop him. Ryan doesn't take kindly to this and throws a punch. But before any further blows can be exchanged, the computer sounds an alarm, alerting the crew that the module's integrity has been compromised. Leona, curious, leaves her room to investigate, only to find the corridor covered in goo. But before she can process what's happening, she's violently pulled into another area. It's Frank, who informs her the alien has made a hole in the low deck and now is in the lander. Very carefully, the pair makes their way to hide in the lab, where it's getting very hard to breathe. In a flash, the lights go out and a strange noise can be heard coming from behind the plant units. This means the alien is here, so Frank pushes Leona out of the room, and as she runs down the corridor, she can hear Frank's screams while the alien kills him. Leona meets with the rest of the team. The tension is thick as Ryan screams at Steven, blaming him for bringing the alien aboard. The creature has breached the hull, damaging the generator and cutting off communication with the rest of the crew. The cameras are down, and they are unable to track its movements. With no other options, the team decides to make a run for the backup generator to restore communication. Steven, feeling responsible for the situation, volunteers to go, weapon in hand. He makes his way to the generator, dodging the alien's attacks, and manages to reconnect the communication system. With the communication system back online, the team can now track the alien's movements. But as Steven attempts to make his way back to the control room, he can hear the alien's ominous noises growing closer. Ryan, quick on his feet, saves Steven by using a metal rope to pull him back to safety. And with the creature's location now known, the team works together to devise a plan to smoke the alien out of the ship. As Steven waits outside, ready to act as bait, Leona opens the airlocks and the lab door, rushing to hide in another room as the alien emerges. The creature quickly makes its way through the airlocks, but just as Richard tries to activate the engine to burn it out, the alien interferes with the signal, leaving him unable to do so. With the creature hot on his heels, Steven runs for his life, with Leona close behind, trying to help him. But just as they make it back inside, the alien emerges, and Richard finally regains access to the engine. Steven and Leona run back inside as the creature is hit by the fire, but it's not enough to kill it and it continues to try and reach Steven, who is being dragged inside by David. Just as the door closes, the alien's tentacle lashes out, injuring David's arm. With the creature trapped outside, Ryan shuts the airlocks, and the others work to reseal the hole. Moments later, the team discovers Frank's body, and Leona, consumed by grief, decides to end her own life. Stephen, meanwhile, thinks back to Amy, his wife who had tried to convince him not to leave, explaining she was working on a vaccine and was pregnant, but it wasn't enough to make him stay, as saving Earth was more important to him than his personal life. David goes to the lab to get his wound bandaged and Stephen brings the tentacle to study it. He discovers that the creature is a biorobot made from the same material as the sphere, which means that the sphere's goal has always been to create these beasts. Stephen breaks the news to David that the tentacle has infected him with a powerful bacteria that hold the key to creating a vaccine to save Earth. 
As he cuts the tentacle, the lights flicker, and he is reminded of the image he saw back on Earth, realizing that the alien is a transponder and this is how its race colonizes planets. Next, Ryan locks him up in the lab and places him under arrest for endangering the lives of the crew. Ryan accuses Steven of valuing lives as expendable and David agrees, claiming that Steven only wants to play the hero and never truly cared about humanity. This brings back memories of Steven's last argument with Amy, who had accused him of having a savior complex before throwing her bracelet away. Despite these accusations, Steven continues his research in the lab, and with the help of Richard, he discovers that they have not traveled through space but through time. They are still on Earth, but four billion years in the past before life existed, and the clone sphere they brought is the same one that paleontologists will find in the future. Ignoring David's deteriorating condition, Stephen becomes excited when he realizes that the fragment of the sphere he had grabbed earlier is the same one he uses in the future to make Amy's bracelet. He proceeds to write a message on it, teaching Amy how to activate the sphere they left behind. In the present, Amy shows up at Stephen's lab, trying to deal with the news, saying the team failed their mission. Back at the ship, Richard brings dire news to Stephen. Ryan is planning to blow up the sphere and has turned off his radio to avoid objections. Stephen implores Richard to open the airlock so he can intervene and as soon as he finds Ryan with the explosives, he tries to reason with him, suggesting they come up with a better plan. However, their conversation is interrupted by a sudden shot, which kills Ryan. It's David, who has escaped through the airlock and has become unhinged due to the infection. He believes the alien has chosen him to help make things right as humans are malfunctioning from the sphere. In a desperate attempt to distract David, Stephen throws Leona's Rubik's Cube at the wall and manages to land a shot on him, prompting David to flee, wounded. Stephen quickly activates the bomb and goes outside to shoot a flare to get the alien's attention. He leads it to the control room and locks it in, but as he runs down the corridor, David opens fire on him, forcing him to hide. At that moment, the alien breaks down the door and approaches Stephen, who manages to fend it off with a quick shot. The alien chases Steven as he runs away, and when he makes it back to the control room, he runs into David, who tries to kill him. However, the alien shows up and kills David first, giving Steven the chance to escape the shuttle just before the bomb finally explodes and kills the beast. As Steven lay unconscious on the ground, Richard desperately tried to reach anyone who may still be alive. Despite the fierce storm, Richard insisted on coming to rescue Steven, but he was told to stay back as Steven made his way back to the cave to use the sphere. In the present, Amy stumbled upon her bracelet and upon reading the message, activated the sphere as well. At that precise moment, the past and present collided and Steven rushed to share the formula for the vaccine before professing his love to Amy. Unfortunately, Steven's time in the cave had depleted his oxygen levels and he passed away. Amy was inconsolable as she realized she was now a widow. Despite her grief, Amy found solace in the fact that many months later, she was raising a strong and healthy baby thanks to the vaccine that was helping to make the earth a better place. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Until next time.